Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. With the November events coming in a couple of weeks' time, I wanted to put together a suggestion for what one of them could be. This is my idea for Ober's Infinite Curse. This is a quite different type of event in that it's something that you win or lose pretty quickly, which means that there's less of a push to play it for many, many, many hours. We'll get to that in a sec. I just wanted to do a very quick recap on the 2021 December events. These were Endless Delve, then Gauntlet, then Endless Heist, then Atlas Invasion, then Delirium everywhere. Now each of these events had its own strengths and weaknesses and its own core appeal to different people. Endless Delve and Gauntlet were very popular. Endless Heist was a complete debacle and I say that as someone that likes Heist. I thought that, that was a real failure of an event. Atlas Invasion was polarizing. Lots of people loved it. Lots of people found it meh. I was in the latter category. And Delirium Everywhere was a flop. What they all shared in common was that they were all major time commitments. None of them felt like they were worth playing unless you could sink in at least 10 and ideally 30 hours of playtime, but you were capped to 10 days in order to do that. Now, I think that this is fine for some of the events, but I do think that some of the events should be at the opposite end of the time commitment spectrum, and Ober's Infinite Curse is all about that. In fact, this is an event that you win or lose within about two and a half hours. So I wanted an event that's not a huge time commitment, and if an event has a reward for spending a lot of time on it, you'll find that some people will do that to remain competitive. For these reasons, Ober's Infinite Curse has a time limit. The timer will start paused at 45 minutes, and it can be extended at various checkpoints that so will add seven and a half minutes to your timer. When this timer runs out, just like in the Ober's Curse of Trove unique map, you'll die. That's the end of it. Now, my intention here is that for a typical casual end gamer, and by this I mean the sort of player that might beat the Shaper during a league, but if they do, it's not in the first two weeks, each attempt should take two hours or less. This will include time spent crafting, time spent planning out their leveling, and for stronger players, it might last a little bit longer, but it should still be in the two and a half to three hour max period. Now this is gonna be hardcore only because it's not an event that's about character progression over time. It's instead about pushing until you fall, and then if you're still having fun, you start over and you get back up again. Alternately, if you've had enough, you move on at that point. This means that character deaths will provide the perfect opportunity to say, you know what, I'm done with this event now. Now this will count both deaths to the timer and deaths to the monsters. And of course, you've got to keep in mind that logging out won't save you from the timer. Now this event may or may not need to be voided, we'll get back to that later. And for the purpose of tiebreakers, it is important that death XP loss should be off in this event. Obviously dying will cause your character to be lost, but it's important to know what your XP was prior to your death. So how does it work? In Ober's Infinite Curse, you're going to start at level 50, and you'll be given a bunch of chests to open. These will contain a four-link chest piece, in fact a whole selection of four-link chest piece bases, all of which will be scoured. There'll be a bunch of weeping essences and a bunch of three link bases in other slots. The goal here is that you can craft yourself gear that would be good enough for a casual player to beat innocence in the campaign, but not enough to make that fight a joke. Alternately, these items could potentially be used in an untimed Tiny's Trial style crafting system. Now your character is going to start triple ascended, which is a huge power boost over what you should have at level 50, but you cannot quadruple ascend by any means. Katava's Cruel Affliction will kick in immediately, so Merciless Affliction will come in later. You'll then enter a copy of the unique map Ober's Cursed Trove, and the time will start ticking. This map will be monster level 45 in the first room, and it will progress upwards normally. When you reach level 50 room, which is the strongbox room of this map, the time will gain 7.5 minutes and it will pause. At this point, you're able to take a break. The chest here will have a special loot table with exotic drops, things like cluster jewels and essences that can't drop in the Ober's Cursed Trove normally, and might have things like Betrayal Benches or Single-Use Harvest Benches. Then you'll be thrown into a new Ober's Cursed Trove that's six levels higher, and you repeat the loop. Katava's Merciless Affliction kicks in when you finish the level 69 Ober's Cursed Trove. And at some point, you're going to be unable to keep going. Either the timer's going to get you, or the monsters will. It may also turn out from playtesting that players may need to get a boost to experience at some point, and that's something that GGG will need to playtest and find out. It may, however, simply be sufficient to turn off the XP penalties for being over-level and under-level for content, and if that's done, that may be enough in order to make everything smooth as far as leveling goes. It's not intended that you're necessarily going to get to super high character levels in this event. I think if a player does really well, they might find themselves at character level 82 or 83, and fighting monsters that are monster level 98, 99. So then there'll be an optional competitive side, like all of these events. You can play it by yourself just to have fun and compete only against your own best performance, or you can compete against other players if you want. Your score will be the highest monster level zone that you've reached. So this score will begin at 45. 
Your character's experience point total will then serve as a tiebreaker. So for example, if Alice dies in the monster level 93 zone with 1 billion 86 million XP, and Bob dies in the same zone but with 1 billion 26 million XP, and then Claire manages somehow to get to the level 91 zone only and die there, but she has one and a quarter billion XP, then Alice places first, Bob second because of the tiebreaker, and then despite her extraordinarily high XP total, Claire actually places third because she got two monster levels lower. This event then feels like it'd be a great place to give out a participation reward of sorts for scoring 70, and some sort of outstanding play award for a score of 90, and then a demigod for the top five on the ladder, and maybe a unique item commission for first place, and divination card commissions for second and third. Now these rewards could be existing MTX that have widespread utility across a lot of builds, and two that spring to my mind might be Scientist Flame Dash for 70, and Sun Prism Herald for 90, or my preference would be a new Herald MTX and a Hideout MTX that are exclusive to this event for 90 days. So the only way to get them for the first 90 days is from winning them in this event, but then after 90 days, they'll go on sale in the cash store as normal. Now it's worth saying that 90 is a number that I've just estimated. I haven't play tested this, obviously I can't. I'm just making a suggestion. I don't have the ability to implement this and test out how it goes. The intention behind the idea of an outstanding play award is that among people who get to at least the early end game of Path of Exile, so people who've beaten Eternal Lab this league, my goal would be that 90% of them would fail to reach this goal on their first attempt, and 10% of them would pass it. Then, of course, you're going to get better on your second, third, fourth tries. You'll learn what works, you'll learn what doesn't work. And the intention is that this is not some elite goal, but it's also not something that's trivial to achieve either. It'll take a lot of playtesting to set this number right. So maybe it turns out that it ends up being 87 instead. Maybe it turns out that it's 92 instead. Whatever it is, playtesting will determine it. Now, it's worth saying that this event might break past monster level 100. We as players don't know if the game can handle monster levels exceeding 100. Data mining implies it probably can't, as monster stats, at least as they appear on POEDB, appear to be defined only to level 100. Someone will manage to achieve this ridiculous feat, and so GGG need to plan for it. Maybe the Cursed Trove that starts at monster level 99 instead scales by adding plus one Calandra Lake difficulty per zone instead of plus one monster level, or if that doesn't work, maybe it adds 6% Delirium in lieu of each plus one monster level past 99. We know the Delirium formula, it's been worked out by players, and basically 102% Delirium is possible to beat, 108% is impossible to beat, because the monsters will be completely immune to all damage, and therefore that will be a hard limit to your progress, but I don't think it's even realistic that anyone would get to the 102% Delirium, let alone beat it. 102% Delirium would give monsters almost 98% damage reduction, and that makes them almost immortal. So should the event be voided? My answer to this is, if at all possible, no. Parent it to Permanent Hardcore or Lake Calandra Hardcore as appropriate, but then you need to void it in one situation, and that is where GGG suspect that players who are solely motivated by their progress in the Parent League feel compelled to stop wasting their time playing the Parent League and start doing the more efficient thing, which is going into this Ober's Infinite Curse event and playing that instead. If that starts being the case, or if they suspect that's going to be the case, that's when it's time to void the event. Hopefully that won't be necessary, but really that comes down to how much is you're willing to give out in those chests. If you do decide to void the event, then you can deterministically give out a Mage Blood at a certain point, or a Headhunter, or Mirrors of Calandra, all sorts of things that would completely break permanent league economies if players could just get a lot of them and then transfer out of the event with them. So that's something that GGG need to think on. And really the people whose opinions are gonna matter the most on this are the people who are most interested in the parent league gameplay. Anyways, that's my idea for Ober's Infinite Curse, a short Path of Exile event that'd be a couple of hours long each time you attempt it, that if you've got lots of time, you can attempt it a lot of times, but that gives a complete experience within a few hours. May your have interesting results.